the firebrand, when it is addressed, has no figure. It's the point only. When moved, firebrand is really nothing but a point. It only appears as a circle or straight line. Consciousness always remains what it is. When the firebrand is in motion, the appearances that are seen in it do not come from elsewhere. When the firebrand is not moved, the appearances do not go elsewhere from the motionless firebrand. The appearances, when the firebrand is not moved, do not enter into the firebrand itself. These are the... All appearances are like that. This also applies to consciousness in both cases. When consciousness is associated with the idea of activity, as in dream and waking states, the appearances that are seen in it do not come from elsewhere. When consciousness is inactive, as in deep sleep, appearances do not go elsewhere from the inactive consciousness. Appearances do not enter into it. Appearances do not emerge from consciousness because they are not of the nature of a substance. These are always beyond our comprehension on account of their being not subject to the relation of cause and effect. The whole subject is causality. Substance may be the cause of another substance. That which is not substance may be the cause of another which is not a substance. But the jivas or beings cannot be possibly anything like substance or other than substance. We don't treat jiva as a substance. Yeah. Thus, external appearances are not caused by the mind, nor is the mind produced by them. Hence, men of discrimination hold the principle of the absolute non-causation or negation of causality. That is all right. This is a lot of shanti. You have to, you have to get a shanti of that thing. <laughs> it makes you a shanti. You know, logic makes you a shanti. A shanti means peaceless. <laughs> so you must silence this huh? logic. Stop that hurling firebrand. Hmm? Attachment to the belief in causality. You see, in dream, you run after something, it runs after something else. Series of causalities. And the whole thing is a illusion. Only mind was there. Destruction of the possession of a ghost through mantras. <laughs> like that. Hmm? As long as there is faith and causality, the endless chain of birth and death will continue for a person. When that faith is destroyed, birth and death become non-existent. The causality that makes us born, Try again, again. The Atman is beyond cause, so there is neither birth nor death in that realization. So let it stop now. So, verse 55. As long as a man persists in the belief in causality, he will find the working of cause and effect. But when attachment to causality vanishes, Cause and effect become non-existent. Ah, in the note mentioned there, this Karika tells us that the chief duty of the student is to analyze the law of causality, find its illusory nature. Attainment of true knowledge solely depends upon this understanding of the causal law. As long as there is faith in causality, the endless chain of birth and death will be there. When that faith is destroyed by knowledge, birth and death become non-existent. All this is seen to be born on account of the illusion of experience due to avidya. Therefore, nothing is permanent. All again, as one with the ultimate reality, is unborn, causeless. Therefore, there is nothing like destruction.
those jivas or entities are said to be born. But that birth is never possible from the standpoint of reality. Their birth is like that of an illusory object. That illusion again is non-existent. The illusory sprout comes from the illusory seed. This illusory sprout is neither permanent nor destructible. <coughs> Same applies to all jivas. In India, certain jugglers produce from illusory seeds, illusory trees full of illusory fruits. Just give you a fruit fr from the tree. Quickly, a small mango plant is shown. Oh, slowly it grows. Then fruits come and give you a fruit. You eat it, find it very tasteful. And then the whole thing goes away. That is one of the juggleries. Illusory fruit and illusory tree. Mm. <coughs> the epithets so of... Says, would that be trickery or do they actually do that? I mean, they... Actually, they do. They I see that they're the boy. They, they do it. it. It is amazing. That is the beauty of magic. It is amazing. Hmm? When Swami Vivekananda saw it in Hyderabad, a man produced beautiful roses with dew on them, just from here, like that. Huh? <laughs> uh -huh. Swami, isn't it the case that the effect doesn't last very long? If you eat those illusory mangoes, you don't feel satisfied. I also time. think so. <laughs> <laughs> I want a real mango, a no illusory mango. Huh? So what have they got? Control of the element? Huh? They got control of the element. Some control of the element, maybe they... That, that man was not a mere magician. Swamiji himself said, this is not a slate of hand trick. He has some siddhi, yogi power. That's what he himself says there. And the powers of the mind, in that lecture you find this. Have you got a copy of Reminiscences of Vivekananda here? That book is, that book is out of print. Reminiscences of Vivekananda. It is out of print. Ah. No, no, there, if there is one copy there, you get it, I'll show you. Huh? The, oh, yeah. The epithets of permanence or impermanent cannot be applied to unborn jivas, uncaused jivas. That which is indestructible by words cannot be discriminated as real or unreal. Atman is dead. It doesn't affect the Atman. It's only a word. Atman is born. It doesn't affect him. That's the language. The Gita you find in the first chapter, second chapter, all this. This Atman is not born, nor does it die. Like that you will find. It is always indestructible. It's not born. There's no causality in the Atman. As in a dream, the mind is seen to act through Maya, manifesting the appearance of duality. So also in the waking state, the mind is seen to act through Maya, producing the appearance of duality. It is no doubt that the mind, which is in fact non-dual, appears as dual in dream. In like manner, undoubtedly, the waking state, which is non-dual, appears as dual. The whole variety of jivas, born of eggs, moisture, etc. There are four types of beings in the world according to Sanskrit classification. First is those beings that are born of eggs. Second, through moisture, all sorts of insects are born so many times, whenever there is a rainfall, something comes. So they call it born of moisture. Then born of the placenta, that's called the human beings and mammals. And what is the last one? Jarayuja, Andaja, Udbhya. That which splits, splits the soil and comes <coughs> like plants. Could be four types of beings. They are always seen by the dreamer. When he goes about in his dream, in all ten directions, and yet they have no existence apart from the mind of the dreamer. These beings, objects of the mind of the dreamer, 
have no existence apart from the mind. Similarly, this mind of the dreamer is admitted to be the object of perception of the dreamer only. Therefore, the mind of the dreamer is not separate from the dreamer himself. The whole variety of jivas, born of eggs, moisture, etc., always seen by the waking man when he goes about in his waking condition in all ten directions is only the object of the mind of the waking man. The same thing applied to the, all the states. Both the mind and the jiva are objects of perception to each other, which then can be said to exist independent of the other. The reply of the wise is in the negative. Both are devoid of the marks by which they could be distinguished, for either can be cognized only through the other, the jiva and the mind. The same thing is repeated in the next verse. As the dream jiva comes into being and disappears, so also all jivas appear and disappear. As the magician's jiva comes into being and passes away, so also all jivas. As the artificial jiva brought into existence by incantation, medicinal herb, etc., they also come and go away, magician's jiva. <coughs> Therefore, in 71, no kind of jiva is ever born, nor is there any cause for any such birth. The ultimate truth is that nothing whatsoever is born or is subject to causality. This is the supreme truth, that nothing is born. Causality is a myth. That's it. If causality is not there, there is no birth. There is no birth, there is no death. The whole world of duality, says Shankara, consisting with the subject and the object, is verily an act of the mind. So I'll say, the consciousness field is true. Subject pole, object pole are only configurations of the, of the field of consciousness. That language we use. On account of the absence of relation between the object, the mind is declared as eternal and unattached. Exactly the true nature of the mind. This is how you'll find in Zen, Zen Buddhism. Constantly it is about this mind. All talk is about this mind. Mind, non-cost, is of this nature. The rest is all imagination. The Shruti also says, the Purusha is always free from relation, attachment. <coughs> that which perceives objects outside of it is related to such objects. But the mind having no such external object he is free from all relation. That which exists on the strength of the illusory experience does not, really speaking, exist. That is the same thing. does not exist. Atman is called Ajya, unborn. In the standpoint of the illusory empirical experiences, there is no need to say Atman is Ajaya. For the point of view of illusory experiences of cause and effect, we simply say the Atman is causeless. But that statement itself is not necessary from the Atman point of view. It is truly speaking, not even unborn. Hmm? That unborn Atman appears to be born from the standpoint of the belief of other schools of thought, dualist. Sankhya school and others. Man has a persistent belief in the reality of the unreal, which is duality. Persistent belief. From the very beginning, we have got that belief. That's what science pricks by reducing all this duality into a unity. Why? For a unified field theory. Even throughout the external world, everything is reduced to a unity by the force of knowledge. Common sense says everything is separate. But if you include the subject also, then the Vedantic conclusion comes. There is only one pure consciousness, infinite and non dual. In it, we can see all this variety, all within it. Bubbles, waves, all acting in the sea as a bottle. It's all the sea. You see bubble, you see wave, you see so many things there. All the sea. That knowledge is knowledge. 
There is no duality corresponding to such belief. It is truly speaking, not even unborn. Hmm? That unborn Atman appears to be born the standpoint of the belief of other schools of thought. Dualist. Sankhya school and others. Man has a persistent belief in the reality of the unreal, which is duality. Persistent belief. From the very beginning, we have got that belief. That's what science pricks by reducing all this duality into a unity. Why, why did Einstein work for a unified field here? Even forgot the external world. Everything is reduced to a unity by the force of knowledge. Common sense says everything is separate. 